Welcome friends to Farm Fresh Designs 59. In today's video, I have three thrift flips with some beautiful spring decoupage paper. So let's get started. So my first piece is a sign that I thrifted recently, but I liked it because it had the arch up at the top and I painted it with Rust-Oleum chiffon cream. And I'm using a redesign with Prima stamp and using brown stays on ink. Now, the name of this stamp is called Handwritten Note, and it has a lot of small script to it. Now, I just recently got it off of Etsy, and I'm not sure if it's going to be retired or not. So, if you're looking for a stamp with small script, um, I would go digging for it on Etsy to see if you can find it. So, my first piece of decoupage paper is going to probably be one of my all-time favorites. It's two female bunnies, and they have on some vintage-looking coats. And I like it because it looks so vintage, and it just reminds me of maybe me and my sister. So I go ahead and tear all around the edges, but because it has the arch up at the top, I want the top of this piece of decoupage paper to kind of be arched up at the top to mimic this particular sign. And so I just kind of play with it for a little bit to get it where I need it. Because I also want that stamp to be on the edges of that sign. And then I just use that same stays on brown ink and I just go all around the edges and antique it. And it just gives it that extra definition when you get ready to decoupage it onto the sign. And these are some little dabbers, and I think you can probably get them at Hobby Lobby, but I've had them for a while, so um, you probably also find them on Amazon as well. So not only am I going to decoupage that to the sign that I thrifted, but I'm also going to be putting some molds all around that sign. Now, these are some molds that I've had made for quite some time, and they are by Redesign with Prima, and they're made out of resin. Now, this little secret with painter's tape, I got that from Victoria Conhurst on Old to Ooh La La on Facebook. And you make that painter's tape sticky, and then you put those different molds on it, and then the sticky side is up, and then on the ends, you take painter's tape to just lay it down. And then that way, those molds don't move at all when you're painting them. And now this is a silicone mat that I'm painting it on. And, you know, once I get ready to clean it up, a silicone mat is super easy to clean up. I painted those with the Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. And now that they're all dry, I put it back on some clean painter's tape. And then I want to antique them. And this is just a mixture of Waverly's, the antique um, stain, and I also used a little bit of the Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain in the natural, just to kind of lighten it up a little bit. So I do just a few little pieces at a time, and then I take a baby wipe, and I wipe it off because I need that stain to get down in the crevices. And then I just do a few at a time because if I did all of them at one time, it would be harder to get it off. Now I'm using the Pent Art Decoupage Varnish and Glue to put it on. And I just put a little bit on and then I pull that up and I put some more of that Decoupage Varnish and Glue on the back and lay it down. And I just... Keep doing that until I get all the way to the end. And what I'm doing now is just using a little piece of cellophane, and I just very gently use that, and that smooths out all the wrinkles. Now, I have already kind of played with all of these different molds and decided where I was going to place them. But before I do, I decided that I would just lightly brush over with some of that antique gel stain just around the edges, just to kind of soften up that chiffon cream. And then I'm going to be using tight bond glue to put all of these pieces all around the edge. 
Now, up at the top is a fleur-de-lis that came from the IOD mold, and it has several different fleur-de-lis on this particular mold. But these are just some molds that I had made because when I make things with resin, I don't like to waste any of the resin at the very end. So a lot of times I'll just have extra molds laying out and so that I don't waste any bit of that resin because it's not cheap. And so I want to kind of get my money's worth out of it. So now that I've got them all figured out where I want them, I just go around with tight bond, thick and quick, and put those on. And then I'll let it sit up for just a little bit. And here's the finished product. And I love it. I just think it's so sweet. And I just love those little female bunnies. Um, one of them has like a little bow on her coat. And I just think it's so sweet. Now, I did have to kind of tear off their little feet um, to make it fit on this sign. But I love this. And it just reminds me of me and my sister. Um, because she's just my best friend and... I just think, you know, she's just the most wonderful person. So on my next thrift flip, I'm going to be making some molds with resin on this particular con. And if you've not used the Amazing Casting Resin, it's super easy to use, but you need to be very specific about it because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Part A is clear and part B is kind of a yellowy color. So I'm measuring it out and I'm pouring it in the silicone cup. And when you pour in that clear, you're fine. You're good to go. But as soon as you pour that second part in, you need to be ready to stir it and go ahead and put it in a mold because it will start to set up in that little silicone cup if you wait too long. And then once you get it in the mold, it has set up in about 10 minutes. It's really quick. And this is a really ornate mold that I've used before, and it's by Redesign with Prima. And I wanted it the part on this one that was the wider part of it. And it took quite a bit of resin for this. It actually took more than I thought. Now, this is just a little thrifted sign that is kind of in the shape of a house, but it's got already a roof on it. So when that resin was still just a little bit soft, I used it with just a pair of scissors to cut that angle for the roof. And I made two pieces of it. Now that has already set up and this is some decoupage paper by Roy Cycled. And I'm not sure what the name of it is, but I'll make sure to look it up and put it in the description box below. But I only want part of this really, really large piece of decoupage paper. And then once I get it all put on there like I want, I let it dry for just a little bit. And then I just use my finger sander to get off those little edges. But I don't throw those edges away. Um, and, you know, at some point, um, I will talk to y'all about what I do with all those little extra pieces. Now, this is a mold by Redesign with Prima, and it's called Finley. And I needed a really large frame, and I made it with hot glue. And the glue gun needs to be at least 100 degrees for it to flow in really easy. And once it sets up, it's clear. And I paint that with Rust-Oleum Chiffon Cream. Now, that piece of decoupage paper is a red bird, and this is not a Christmas decoupage paper because it has spring flowers in it. So I lay that mold on it, and I trim it off up underneath. But before I put that on my little birdhouse, then I want to add just a little extra stamp to it. And this is a stamp by IOD, and it's called Birds, Branches, and Blossoms. And so I stamp it with the IOD black ink and I stamp one of the large branches. And then once that's on, then I stamp one of the little blossoms on top of that. And it mimics the, the flower that is in the decoupage paper. 
and I make sure to press it on and then I pull it straight up and then that keeps it from smearing. Now, this is something that I've done in the past and I love doing this. This is a really thick stencil by Redesign with Prima and this one is called Royal Brocade. And I'm using some Redesign with Prima chalk paste and it's kind of thick or you could use heavy duty gesso or you could use spackling. But I like this chalk paste because this particular color is called Vintage Lace. And I usually get all of that from Micah Daughters, but currently she's out of the Vintage Lace, but it comes in different colors. And I just spread it on, and this stencil is, is sort of thick, so you're going to see when I pull it straight up that that chalk paste, it, it's kind of thick on that particular thrift flip. But I go ahead and spread it all out and look at that in the corner. That's so pretty. Okay, so now I'm just using the decoupage varnish and glue. And I'm going to lay all of this down on my sign now. So I, I put some the decoupage varnish and glue on the paper. But on that frame, I'm going around with the tight bond thick and quick. And here is the final project. I love it. I think it's so, so pretty. Now, I did think about maybe putting some stain on the stencil and on the frame and on the roof to kind of soften it up. But honestly, I was afraid that if I did and messed it up, it was just going to be impossible to try to fix. So I just left it at that. And I may go back and maybe put a little bit on the edges. But for right now, I really, really like it. And a lot of people like birds. And these two pieces of decoupage paper were something that y'all all voted on um, recently when I did a community tab. Now, this last piece of decoupage paper is so, so pretty. Um, and this isn't something that I recently put in the community tab. Um, but it's some decoupage paper that I had from Decoupage Central. Now, this is a just a thrifted birdhouse, and it had some different little pieces of wood on it, and I just had to kind of yank those off. And then I painted it with Rust-Oleum linen white chalk paint. And this is just some fabric that I had. And so it was really easy to trim it so that I could put it on the roof because it's already, you know, the check gingham. But I wanted to make sure that it looked really good, so I tuck that fabric up underneath and when I put it on I actually used some fabric glue on it. Now it was kind of hard to get it up underneath that little roof um, so I ended up using just like a little spatula to get that on and then I just put it on really easy. I put a little bit on at a time and then laid it down and I used the cellophane wrap to kind of push it down and then I put a little bit more on, and I just worked my way all the way around. And instead of cutting two different pieces, I just cut, cut one long strip to go over the entire roof. And you'll see why I'm going to be using the black in just a minute. But I love this. Now, look at this beautiful decoupage paper with the sunflowers. Now, I don't know about you, but I think that sunflowers look so pretty with black gingham. But I'm only going to be using this decoupage paper on the sides of the birdhouse. So once again, I go ahead and get it on there and I put a little bit on at a time. And then down at the bottom, that extra part that's hanging, I'll leave that on there for just a pretty good while because I want to make sure that it's dry. And then I'm going to be using an X-Acto knife to cut it off. And then I just do the, go back to the next side and I put the other half of that decoupage paper on the other side. But I love this. But now I'm going to wait till later on to, to tear that off at the bottom or to use an X-Acto knife. Um, but I do want to use my finger sander to get it off on the different sides. Now, the IOD Sunflower Mold, it's pretty large. And it was just going to kind of overwhelm my birdhouse. But this flower on the IOD Primitive um, Mold kind of looks like a sunflower. And it may actually be a sunflower, but it's a lot smaller. 
So I made that with air dry clay, but I'm gonna fit that over the little ledge on the birdhouse. So I just use a straw to kind of push into it to make a hole. And because I'm just gonna press it straight onto that birdhouse over that little dowel on it. And then I just push it all the way down onto that birdhouse and I've used the tight bond thick and quick. And I just think it looks so sweet. Now I make another little sunflower mold and I cut it in half and I put, you know, those on the edges of the front. Now I'm going to make some butterflies, but I want them to look like they're actually in flight. And I'm using the IOD butterfly mold and it's called Monarch. Now while it's setting up, this is just an IOD stamp. And it's just called butterflies and I find a little butterfly on it and I stamp it on a napkin and then I'm going to be putting this on the front down in the corner and you'll see in just a second I put that down on the left hand side of the birdhouse. Now if you notice on this particular birdhouse if you'll see where I put those sunflowers I put half of a sunflower on one side and the other half and it looks like the sunflower is kind of hanging onto that birdhouse from the edge and then i just use um, the decoupage varnish and glue to get that little stamp on now um, i have been letting these molds set up and i go ahead and let them set up but they're still pretty soft um, because that's going to make it easy to pinch it together and make it look like they're in flight. But there's one particular one that I made, had a little bit of resin left, so I only made half of a little butterfly, and I'm gonna be putting that on one of the sides. But now while this mold is still soft, I just pinch it together, and it does take a little bit of effort, um, because there's three of them that I do like that. Or there might be a little bit more. There might be four. And I just pinch them together. And I kind of hold on to it for just a little bit. And it's not going to be completely sticking up. But it's going to be just enough to where you'll be able to see the edges of the wing sticking up. And then it's not going to be flat on the surface. And by now, that decoupage paper is all dry, so I could use the X-Acto knife to get the extra off. Now, I know that this looks really strong. This is Dixie Belle, and it's called Colonel Mustard. And I know it looks really, really dark now, um, but I'm going to soften it up later. And I put that on the different sunflowers um, on the front of this little birdhouse. And I also use it to paint the butterflies as well. So it's, it's pretty strong in the beginning, um, but what I end up doing is I dry brush just a white over it, but just barely enough to where it softens it up, but it's still got enough of that color. And now these are just the different butterflies that I have pinched together. And I go ahead and paint the back of this butterfly i don't paint the part that i'm going to glue because it's going to be sticking up so you're going to actually see the back of that particular butterfly and then the center of the sunflowers i just painted it with a brown color and then i go ahead and i put the different molds on now when you put those butterflies on Remember, it's just going to be a little edge, so you need to kind of hold on to it for just a little bit until it sets up so that it won't slide off, but it doesn't take very long. And here's the final piece, and I just think it's so pretty, and it's it can be spring or summer, and if you wanted this to go into the fall, you might want to put a little bit of antique wax on it to kind of soften it up and give it more of a fall vibe. But I just think it's so, so pretty. And I like the black gingham with the sunflower. So what do you think? Is this something that, you know, you like? Or do you like these kind of colors in the spring and in the summer? 
Now, this is not something that's going to go outside. Um, it's going to need to either be on a sun porch or inside your house. But this isn't something that you would use at, for actual birdhouse. So, friends, we are at the end of the video today. And I hope you've enjoyed it. And I hope you inspired you as we head on into the spring. But, you know, make sure that you're looking for pieces when you are out thrifting that are sort of unusual. And so this particular sign, I knew that I needed something that looked like a birdhouse for this particular red cardinal. And on these bunnies, I looked for something that specifically had an arch to it because I knew that that's what I needed for those particular bunnies. So in the comments below, tell me which one was your favorite. And tell me, are you ready for spring? It is almost getting warm in North Carolina, and I know it's going to get cold again, but it's been so pretty this week, and it I just kind of want to believe that it's getting really close to spring because I am ready to be outside, and I know my grandkids are ready to be outside as well. It's been a little windy, but it's starting to feel a little bit like spring. So if you enjoyed the video today, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel when we would love for you to be part of our family. Now I've got three more videos I'm working on, so I'm not really sure what my next video is going to be, but I'm excited. So you be watching. I've got some more thrift flips coming up, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.